based church. Hallelujah. We operate only on the word of God. Hallelujah. We do not add to the word, nor do we take away from the word That's of God. Right. And our foundation, we are standing on four W's. And those four W's are wisdom, word, work, and worship. Hallelujah. And when we come into the house of the Lord, we always ask God for his wisdom. Without his wisdom, we cannot understand the word of God. Hallelujah. And we know that we are laborers in the vineyard. Hallelujah. And we're going to worship him one more time. We're going to worship him in the beauty of holiness. We're going to worship him.
do not pass me by Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your voice. Lord, do not pass, do not pass me by in the mighty name of Jesus. Do not pass me by, Lord. Lift up your voice and begin to pass me by, mighty Redeemer.
why we are now called the sons and the daughters of God because a rescue mission was planned the blood was shed to rescue us from the clothes of sin from the clothes of death from the clothes of the enemy and now we celebrate that blood that blood that was shed 2,000 years ago, it still has the power to save. It still has the power to deliver. It still has the power to break you from any bondage. That's why we have come to celebrate you. Because you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm
can worship you for me. Come on, join us, church, for all the things. For all the, the things, things you have done. You've done for me. And no one and no can worship you worship for me.
Shandana. I feel the power.
somebody lay your hands the atmosphere is conducive if you are sick in any part of your body lay your hands lay your hands tonight lay your hands watching online lay your hands sister Cynthia if you are watching lay your hands on your soul lay your hands on your knees lay your hands there is a healing coming to you there is healing coming to you now there's healing coming to you Amen. there's healing coming to you Amen. Hey, Kaposa, lay your hands whichever part of your body Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost minister right now lay your hands lay your hands lay your hands lay your hands Holy Ghost Katoli Atapa Lepaya do Shatakapa Rapayali Kodo Stapahadia Matoni Brigado Shaparia Rapaya do Koto Payatapa Father let your healing power begin to manifest right now let it manifest right now right now right now let it manifest right now right now right now right now upon the life of your children right now receive it receive it receive it i receive it i receive it i receive it receive it it's yours i receive now 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 let's go now receive it receive it receive it receive your healing receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it right now 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 receive it right now receive it receive it right now receive your healing receive your healing right now I receive the most let fire out the most I receive I receive Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, just clap those hands. Just clap them. Clap them, clap them, clap them. Clap them. Hey! That tomb is empty. Sickness doesn't have power over you. The tomb is empty. Poverty doesn't have power over you. The tomb is empty. Confusion doesn't have power over you. The tomb is empty. We honor you, Lord. We thank you tonight for another night. We say thank you, Father. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, so look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am blessed. I am blessed. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Walk to a crazy neighbor. Give that crazy neighbor a high five. Yeah, and I'm tell blessed. that neighbor, I am, I am blessed. That is why I am in the building. If you are watching online, call out a sister or a brother online. Tell them, I am blessed. That is why I am watching tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are blessed. I am blessed. Your children are blessed. Everything connected to you is blessed. I declare. Hey. Help me. Help me. Help me. Let's celebrate our online viewers. Come on. Let's celebrate them. Clap those hands. We love you guys. Watching from Ghana. Second Gita Grande. We love you, Pastor Emmanuel and your team. We love you guys watching from Zimbabwe. Watching from Uganda. Watching from Swaziland. Watching from Burundi. We love you guys. Jamaica. We love you. Kingston. We love you. Martika Bay. We love you. America. We love you, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, New York, Mason. Them, we love you guys. We love you. Let's show the Canadians some love. Show them some love. Show the Canadians some love. We love you. We love you. We love you. Fire that revolution. Come on, help me celebrate the workers of this. Great commission. Come on, come on, come on, come on. From the top here to the last person. Celebrate them. They are doing an amazing job. They are doing an amazing job. We celebrate you guys. 
What amazing ministry, amazing workers. You guys are too much. You are too much. You are too much. Come on, help me celebrate the mama of the house. Pastor Costas, the Winnipeg family. We love you guys. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. Come on, come on. I'm not going to waste much time. Help me celebrate her. Reverend. No, no, no. Let's celebrate the woman of God. Let's celebrate the woman of God. Mrs. Mrs. Kwati. Celebrate a powerful woman of God. Hey, last night was another level. Ay, 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 ay. Hey, we celebrate you. Woman of God, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. We don't waste much time. Last night was fantastic. Today will be caucastic. <laughs> hey! Deeper revelation. We don't waste much time. We church. I want you to help me bring to the podium Reverend Yo. Watch it. Come on, clap your hands. exciting to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so blessed. We church, the Lord bless you. God bless Pastor Solomon, the first lady, the kids. The Lord bless you. The bless you all, the workers, all those who are working for the Lord. The Lord bless you. It's an honor. I don't know, for some reason, this um, worship tonight took me way back. It took me way back. A woman of God, you have no idea what just happened tonight. We went through a trying time some years ago. Years ago, in, in, right here in this city. Difficult time. It was the first time I questioned God. First time I wanted to give up ministry. And that song, we bless your name, O Lord. We praise your name, O Lord. That song took me way back into Ghana in the Pastor Otterbell's church. They had a worship leader, I forgot his name, but he had a tape that we had, that song, series of songs on that tape. And anytime when I pop that tape, when we're going to do this, I'll pop it in and then it will take me through all the worship. And I saw the Lord healing me of unbelief and doubt. Because you can't serve God with doubt and unbelief. You have to go through faith. That song took me through life. And at the end of the day, I was healed from doubt. So when you read the scripture, it said, I heal me of my unbelief. That's exactly what it means. Please have your seat. Have your seat. Hallelujah. Yes, I can't forget that song at all. I cannot. Anytime when I hear that song, I remember those times when we went through. And I said, Lord, thank you for the song. Because, you know, this morning, the word that we ministered was um, about keys. Right? We talked about keys to the kingdom. Keys to your breakthrough. And in the teachings, I said to the body of Christ that why God is called the Lord of breakthroughs this is not my message, but this is just something I want to throw out there. It's because he could use anything to do anything at any time. He could use trees to give you your breakthrough. He could use fish to give you your breakthrough. He could use the Red Sea to give you a breakthrough. He could use Jordan River to give you a breakthrough. He could use the walls of Jericho to give you a breakthrough. He could use Pharaoh to give you a breakthrough. That's why he's called the Lord of all breakthroughs. So when you serve him, don't underestimate him. He can use anything to do anything at any time. He's the Lord of breakthroughs. The Lord bless you. Tonight, as we can see, the tomb is empty. Jesus is risen. He's no more there. He's gone. But there are some 
ones who cannot understand the power of resurrection. <laughs> so they've gone to the tomb looking for Jesus. <laughs> they are looking for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm so excited that when you took the microphone just before you ended, you said something. And you said, Jesus has risen and the enemy has no power over your life. Amen. That is a powerful message. And actually, this message leads me into what I'm about to minister tonight. Hallelujah. So we're going to go straight into Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 7. Luke 24, 1 to 7. Yes, go ahead. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember why he told you back in Galilee that the son of man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell the 11, his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. Amen. Thank you so much. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? The Bible says that in Mark chapter 9 verse 31, Jesus told them, I'll rise in three days. This is Rabboni, the Messiah, telling them that in three days, I'll rise. But understand the situation in Jerusalem or Israel because nobody has ever died and risen. Nobody. So for you to tell them that you are going to die and rise, it is difficult to understand. And you know that the relationship the disciples have with Jesus was so close. So they did not want him to go. So they kept an eye on him. It was difficult to accept and embrace the death of Christ. But the death of Christ had a purpose because it had to be done. Hallelujah. For you and for me and for the world. So the Bible says that this woman of God went to the tomb with spices to go and embalm the body. They still could not get it. So when they got there, the angels spoke to them and revealed themselves to them. They said, why are you here? And with the spices in their hand, it was an indication that they came to embalm the body of Jesus. He said, the one that you are looking for has risen. He told you this. He's no more here. So why are you looking for the living among the dead? You will hardly go to the morgue and find a living person sleeping in the fridge. No, you only find dead, emotionless bodies. So it is difficult to find somebody going into the morgue and looking for somebody who is alive unless you've been sent. <laughs> so the angels ask them, why are you looking for one who is alive? He's risen. Let me tell you today, I would like us to read this scripture. It's very, very, very important before I move into this message. I'm already in it, but I want us to, to get the facts and the foundation right. In Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 14. 
Romans 6, 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to read from 6 to 14. Hallelujah. If you have that scripture, please, I'd like you to read Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 14. Romans 8, Romans 8, 6 to 14. Yes, please. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of, uh, the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by his same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do, if you for you for if you live by its dictates you will die but if though if if through the power of the spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature you will live for all who are led by the spirit of god are children of god amen amen so this scripture shows you that when christ died and he rose again he died with you and when he rose he rose with you. Amen. So today you are alive by the reason of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Bible says that the sinful nature because of the resurrection has been brought down to arrest. Amen. Are you with me? When he died with you and he rose, he rose with you. Your old self was crucified with him. And the body which was ruled by sin is no more in control. Amen? Now, I want you to understand that Satan walks around looking for your old self. If the enemy is going to bring you down, the first visitation is to your old self. The things that I used to do, I do them no more. That is the first step. The times when you were drinking, alcoholism, any habit that you live in darkness with, that you have been saved, that is the first place he goes to, to get your rap sheet. I don't know if you know what your rap sheet is, but your rap sheet, for those who don't know, is when the police arrest you, they look on the computer to find out what your history is. That is why the enemy is called the accuser of the what? The brethren. He lives with past information. So it was emphatical that when Jesus died, he would die with you. And when he rose, he rose also with you. What does this mean? You are no more controlled by your sin nature by the reason of the resurrection. No more. Satan has no right to try to induce you back into your past. Why? Because the tomb is empty. In Galatians 2.20 it says that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I live but Christ that liveth in me. I have been crucified. It took place. Empty tomb. Amen. So when the enemy comes, he comes by the reason and the authority of your past history. 
And if it can learn you and bait you back, that's how he's able to get people. But Galatians tells me that I have been crucified. When you are crucified, it means it has been killed and nailed on the cross of Calvary. So when he's looking for a rapture, you will not find any. Because he has to go to Calvary. And when he goes to Calvary to search for your record history, he will find the blood of Jesus Christ speaking on your behalf. Masakataya. He will find the blood. And the blood talks about the redemption and the resurrection and the crucifixion of Christ. That Christ was a perfect atonement for mankind. That when he died and he rose, he rose to sit by the right hand side of the father. Not alone, but with you. In order for the enemy to get your record, the Bible says that he has, in Revelation chapter 12 verse 10, he says, he's the accuser of the brethren who does what? Go to God about your history day and night. When the, he said, in Job, he says, when the sons of men came to God to report. They found Satan among them. The Lord asked him, what are you doing here? He was coming to bring an accusation, your record, before God. Not knowing that Jesus, the resurrected one, is sitting on the right hand of judgment. You see, the right hand depicts power and judgment, authority. That is where Jesus is sitting. So in order for God to rule judgment, he needs to look on the right hand side to get permission in order to release a judgment. And when he looks on the right hand side, he sees nothing else but Jesus Christ, son of the living God. He sees the blood. He sees the cross of Calvary. He sees Gogota. He sees you with him. And therefore, the report that the devil is looking for has been erased. It's been erased. Because the blood of Jesus wiped away your sins. And is speaking on your behalf right now. And the lying tongue that is looking for a case against you. When you open your mouth, the blood will open first. The blood has become your defense. Because the tomb is empty. It is a new day. And gears have shifted. No more are you going back. Listen, I understood the scripture because back home, I remember I'll go into our backyard farm. And as I'm going through the farm, I'll see that a snake had passed through the farm. And he has shed his old skin. I don't know if you know about the old skin of a snake. And he will leave his shell down there. And do you know you will never see that snake again. He will never come back to where he left his old skin. What does that mean? When you are saved by the blood of Jesus, you don't have to go back again. And it's not a backward movement, but it's a forward movement to your prosperity and your success. That old boyfriend that used to beat you up, that relationship when you are abused, uh, you don't have to go back again because the blood has redeemed you uh, and given you power to go forward, to go forward. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, it's about time uh, you begin to celebrate Jesus Christ and thank you for the blood. I was told, man of God, because I was a slow learner in school. When people were getting 98%, 97%. I was in the 60s. So the teachers ruled me out. Because I was challenged. I'll read and read and read and read and read. At the end of the reading, nothing is retained in my memory. But nobody knew that I was suffering from that issue. So you know what they ruled? You have no good. You're not going to end up anything. You're not going to make it. They ruled me out. I remember one of my classmates, Boat. I'll never forget him, Boat. 
If you are watching, listen to this message carefully. And don't talk like that again. He said to me, you, you end up selling CD, CDs on the street. I don't know if you have heard that before about your life. And they told you you are a woman, you are good for nothing. And nothing good is coming out of you. Uh, and you are a waste of life. Uh. The reason why they are able to pass that judgment. Because they don't know what happened in the tomb. They have not heard about the blood that is cleansing and washing. That is why they can say what they feel like saying. But they did not understand that in that tomb was my future. In that tomb was my success. In that tomb was my prosperity. In that tomb was my mother millionaire. It was in the tomb. And it happened way before I was born. Because Jesus was slain before the foundation. So because I was born before I was born, the Lord has made it all right and set my feet on a rock to stay. So whilst I was going through school and not understanding what education was, struggling to find my way, when I get my results, man of God, I could not go home. Because when I look at math, English, science, social science, geography, agriculture, English, and even the local language tree, which I speak, I was in the 60s. My father would not accept anything below 90. So I had to hide my school report. I did not understand. If I knew that the tomb had been emptied and there was a future waiting for me, I would have been bold and go say, Dad, what's up, y'all? Here is my report. Are you understanding? I didn't know. I have come to tell you that let me tell you, if anybody has held you back because of the blood, it's about time you start walking, walking like this. Get on your high heel. It doesn't matter where you bought it from, from salvation, I mean, I don't care. I begin to walk. Begin to walk. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Because something has happened in the tomb. That old boyfriend thinks that he can come back and parasite you again. He can come back and slap you. He can come back and beat you up. But I've come to tell you, because of the blood of Jesus and the empty tomb, there are angels of God surrounding you 24-7. Let him touch you and we will see Fidikadochi, what the angels will do to him. Are you crazy? I have come to tell you about the resurrection, Jesus. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why? No more. It is over. Jesus has risen. And the blood is speaking for you. You have a new life in Christ. Man of God, I told you yesterday about some miracles that were happening in my life. They were successive. Yeah? If nobody appreciates you and don't know your value, there is no reason to give your body to that person. No! Listen, I have made a decision. Me, I block people Social media, if your vibes are negative, I block. And you got to block. You got to block. Oh, block it. If you're watching me on television, block them. I said block them. Block them. They have nothing to offer. Sometimes they send you a high. I remember when I went to Ghana, a friend of mine told me, he said, when somebody send you high on WhatsApp, don't respond. I said, what are you talking about? Why shouldn't I somebody say how? I was new. Later on, I discovered that when they say hi, the next thing is, can you send me 50 CDs? Are you hearing me? By the time when I found out that was true, my money was finished. Because my heart is to give. 
by the high, 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 high. Oh, no, 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 no. They got to stop. Let me tell you something. That abuse have to stop in your life. You are a woman of destiny, a woman of power. And the blessings of, listen, if they don't know how you're going to end, don't allow them to abuse you. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You are beautiful in the eyes of God. When Jesus rose, he rose with you. And it was just not a casual rising. It was a rising of empowerment to empower you. So the Bible says that when the enemy went before God, he said, have you, God asked him, have you checked my, my servant Job? He said, yes, I've checked him, but you think that Job will serve you for nothing? It because you are blessing, that's why he's worshiping you. The Lord said, then they try it and see. The reason why the enemy is fighting you is because he knows that you have come out of something bad and now you have been walking to something new. And he wants to try and pull you back. So sometimes those text messages that they sent to you and you know what happened. Why you broke off and you cut off. What they are doing, they are learning you. The Bible says that we are learned by the reason of our flesh. The reason of your lust. Because in the past, you walk a life of lust. The flesh was weak. They took advantage. But now, Jesus has risen from the tomb. And he has given you a new life. So now the Holy Ghost is alive. Now you are fortified. And you are strong. You know your left from your right. You know what is bad and good. You know what is abuse and love. And even in love, there are three types of love. There's eros, agape, and what? Filio. And every woman is looking for a filial love. A filial love is a love of what? Uncondition. So don't tell me that the fact that I have a new baby and put on some weight, therefore you have the right to abuse me. No way. I ain't going to allow you because if you love me, you stay with me through the process. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? When I came back from Ghana, my brother, my stomach was a bit flat. But the Canadian food has, con I have, I have not considered it. I found out that my belly was starting to swell. And I was looking for what the woman of God would say. He said, we have to believe God. We have to trust God. You have to change your diet. Amen. That is what you need. I don't want somebody to tell you, oh, baby, you look so fat. You look no, 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 no. Words of comfort. Words of assurance. That let's go jogging in the morning. Let's do some salad for you today. Are you hearing me? Let's stop drinking the pops and let's do something different. Let's go organic drinks. And let's watch your diet. Don't eat after 7 p.m. You know, you're working towards something. But not somebody who come and slap you around. No. Jesus has risen. It's a new day. It's a new dimension. It's a new page. When Jesus rose, you rose with him. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? They are looking for you because they think that you will just fall back into your old ways. Bring you back to the place of this coast. You know, now I used to be a DJ when I was young. Oh, big time. Cool and the gang, all those people, I used to spin their songs. But now when I hear those things, <laughs> my ears don't reject it automatically. What I hear is, I love you, Lord. And I lift up my hands unto you. I surrender to him. You are the king and the altar of my faith. That is what brings life into me. Not second turn around. Ping, 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 ping. And at midnight, I'll be taking the bus going home. Smell of marijuana because the club is full of smoke. Listen, you don't belong there. You don't belong in the past because Christ has risen with you. And now you have been given a position in heaven. He said, you sit with me and with the Father. That is a place of dignity. Have you realized that anybody who goes to the Queen of England to visit, when you go, you have to bow. You have to bow. It doesn't matter who you are.
You can be Bill Gates. You can be whoever you think you are. You have to bow to the Queen of England. Give them respect. You desire respect. You desire respect. You desire respect. If nobody's willing to give you that respect, walk away from them. Amen. Because you are risen and sitting with Jesus on his right hand side. It's a new position. It's a new day. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? When they come, they will never find you again. I'm going to give you some few scriptures and I'm going to back this up with the Bible. Amen. So, watch this. Watch this. In 1 Corinthians 5, 17, it said, regard no one according to the flesh. Anyone in Christ is a new creature. And all the Adamic nature has passed away and all things have become new. For God has reconciled us back to himself through Jesus and given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has reconciled us back to himself. Now we have a relationship. You can talk to God. You don't have to go through the Holy of Holies and speak through a high priest. You can pray and call upon him and he'll hear you. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 43, 18 said, Do not call to the mind of the former things, the old lifestyle. Pay no attention to the things of old. The desire from the former things is over. Alcohol is over. Sex indiscriminately is over. Bars going to drink. Stay all night long. Come home after 1 a.m. and your wife is sleeping. Doesn't know whether you came home or you didn't come home. It is over. Going online looking for lovers. And you don't know if that person is a killer. Will take your life. All night. Facebook. Twitter. There. You are on all the media. Why are you Kim Kardashian? Tell me. And you could take that time to read the Bible and get to know and talk closer to Jesus, the one who has redeemed you from your sins and give you a new lifestyle. Listen, the reason why the enemy is worrying wild is because the body of Christ don't know who they are. And we have not taken our authority. We haven't. We have not touched anything yet. Because if we touch it, we will begin to take Canada by storm. We will take over the malls. I, 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 I used to go jogging. I'm going to start when the weather is nice. But I'll go to the whole an area and I'm seeing million dollar homes. Maybe 500, 400. And I'm trying to find out if I can see somebody who looks like me. I find no one. They've taken over the cities. Where are you? Where is your faith? Amen. So you've got to understand that Christ delivered you from darkness not to live in poverty. Okay. You are sitting on the right hand side with Jesus. Do you know what is available to you? He said the streets are even made of gold. Talk about all ornaments in heaven. It's available to you. But you know what is key over all this thing is your relationship with the Father. To have a good relationship. Because if he has redeemed you, sent his only son to redeem you from the curse. What he's saying is that I need you than ever before. You are important to me. To the extent that I can send my son to die on the cross to bring you back to myself. God is asking for relationship. He needs you. And you got to draw closer to him day by day. Make time for him. Because it is critical. Because when Jesus rose, he said, he showed the enemy and the wicked one that it is over. He displayed the defeat of the enemy all over the world to show them that yes, this is real and you got to believe it as a child of God. No more are you going to go back because like I said, the snake will never go back to his old shell. You have walked away do you know how much it took for God to sacrifice his only son to bring you out? You must respect and adore the move of God. 
It shows how important you are. That not the sacrifice of a goat or a cow. The son of God. The only son to bring you out of that situation in which you used to be. When I got saved, I said to myself, I'm not going back again, man of God. I don't look back anymore. I don't miss anywhere. You know, there are times that people will sit down and say, oh, Charlie, I miss in 1980s. Bah, Charlie, I used to... No. That feeling is gone. I left that on the cross of Calvary. <laughs> when I rose, I left it behind. I don't think about things that happened in the past because it doesn't bring you any results. But what brings you results is when you come to Jesus. And you receive him. You find a new life in him. Last night at 4 a.m. I'm going to show you something about when he rose again. At uh, in, I would say 2018, 2017. Probably 2017. I was having discussions with one of the leading Canadian companies here. And we we're about to do a project. That project was going to be one of the largest, probably the first of its kind, maybe in West Africa and maybe not, maybe West. I'll say West. We went through all the government channels to meet the person who was in charge. Only to be disappointed the last minute upon all the invitations. And these business partners had flown to Ghana to have the meeting with the person in charge in that ministry the person in charge refused to see us. So the partners left the country. I sent text messages. They will not respond. I will call. They will not pick. So me, I buried, I left that thing in the tomb. <laughs> I went back in the tomb. I said, Father, this one, I'm leaving it because it's too painful to remember. When I came back, I think it was maybe about a month ago. My wife said, yeah. <laughs> we need to bring life back into this opportunity. Everything the enemy, the caterpillar, the locust, the canker worm have eaten, God will do it again. He'll bring it back to life. I said, no, this one is not going to work. This one, the people are so disappointed that they don't even want to hear from me. No emails, they don't even respond. So I called the gentleman who was in charge that I was dealing with that brought these investors to Ghana. He didn't pick he would not respond to my calls. So I contacted a friend who knew him. And in the conversation, the friend said to him, you know, Reverend Yao, he said, well, this is what is taking place. The man said to him, this is what I wanted to hear. You bring this business back again. Are you hearing me? Something that was dead. You see, when the resurrection took place, certain things that you've lost, God will bring it back again. It is not only salvation, but everything that you lost, everything that you were looking, desiring for, it will happen, it will resurrect. He said, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing, something new. I will bring water, rain in the desert. It does, the desert, it doesn't rain, no. But he said, I'm going to do something new because of you, because of what happened. He said, I will create rain. I'll bring stream into the dry places. You're talking about miracle? You are a miracle. Amen. He's going to do something new. Certain things are going to begin to pop up in your life. Business opportunities, ideas that you have never heard before. They're going to start popping up. Do you know, man of God, that every believer, every believer, there are 250 new ideas that the spirit of God pops into their mind every day. 250. Things that have not been done on earth. If you don't believe what I'm saying, get an exercise book and get a pen. Pray and say, Father, give me ideas. And you'll be surprised at 4 a.m., 2 a.m., 1 a.m., you wake you up. And you begin to write. Man of God, one day I took a book like this. And I was writing. The Holy Ghost was speaking. Shipping companies. Helicopter businesses. 
private jets, airlines. I began to write. I said, well, am I mad? So when I was, I was hiding it from my wife that she wouldn't see because you might think that I've gone local. It went on for a week, two weeks, three weeks. And then the Holy Spirit stopped. And I closed the book. It's a brown book. I'll never forget. She gave me that book. I've hidden the book. She doesn't even know what is in that book. Because when you read it, my brother, you think I'm crazy. I asked the Lord. I said, Father, so you are telling me that I'm going to have shipping, shipping magnet lines. Say yes. I said, then what's going to be the name that I'll put on the side of the ship? He said, Jesus Christ is Lord. So when you see that ship floating on the sea, you see Jesus Christ. He said, it has not been done before. I said, so what about if it goes through an area where there are people who don't believe in Jesus, they might bomb it. They said, son, just leave it to me. I'll take care of it. You see, you have to have a relationship with him. Because the tomb is what? And he has brought you close to who? God. So now there's a relationship. The same way you come in the cool of the day and say, Adam, what's happening, y'all? And Adam said, Lord, nothing much is, you know, cooking. He said, well, then let's have some marshmallows and something on fire. You know, there was a relationship. They could talk. They could, you know, chat and everything. God wants you in that place where you can wake up and say, Father, thank you. What is the plan for the day, Holy Spirit? And he said, you know, today, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Man of God, I have that book. So when I was creating the name, I said, Holy Ghost, what business, what's the name of the company? He showed me, he said, no, it is not Brave View Group, but make it Brave View Group of Companies. That's the name of my company. Listen, you got to trust God. God has redeemed you from a curse. And everything that the enemy and your accusers were looking. Those who said you will amount to nothing. And you're not going to make it in life. Do you know what they're doing? They're watching. <laughs> they're watching you. They're praising God. Hallelujah, praise God. They're watching. They're watching you. But let them keep on watching. Yeah. Let them keep on watching. Because something has happened in the atmosphere. Christ has risen. And every benefit that is entitled to you as a child of God. From heaven is at your beacon call. You will not miss it. You will never miss it. Some of you sitting here, in some few years' time, you're going to meet me at maybe Switzerland. Hey, Reverend, what's up, yo? I, said, I don't remember you. Oh, you came to We Church, you preached some years ago, and you told me, oh, anyway, you know, Rev, man of God, I'm just passing through. I need to meet some people on a trillion dollar contract. And I'm in Switzerland for three days only. And I just didn't come alone. I brought my private jet. But I don't know if you need a ride to go back to Ghana. I will drop you and come back to Switzerland. Are you hearing me? Somebody. I shared with you my bishop. He said, our friends in New York who take their private jet and go for breakfast in Paris. How much more you? Huh? Stop struggling with this. 2009 cars. My brother, me, I ended it last year. Yeah, I ended it. The one that I have now is close to the grave. It's going. And I'll be buried it very soon. This time, I want to hear rubber. I want to sit in the car. I can smell the rubber. The rubber in the car. I am tired of some perfumes that belong to other people. That they put in and they sold the car to me. Are you hearing me? I am tired of transmission problems. Uh, that when you are driving the car, it's dancing. I thought I was the only one. Man of God, people identify you with the smoke that is coming from your exhaust pipe because your, 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 your pipeline has broken. You don't have money to fix it. They identify you. Say you are Holy Ghost born. But listen, your exhaust is smoking. Me, I'm tired. So the one over here, I've prayed for it. I've blessed it. And I'm making an appointment for the final burial. So that I can pick up the fresh one. Because a transition has taken place. Because the tomb is empty. No more. 
Am I going to be sitting down there? Man of God. <laughs> it is over. Oh. Listen, if you are going to make it, you need to die to self. I told somebody the other day, he said, me, I'm a dead man walking on. He said, Reverend, why are you dead? Because the Bible said, I have to die to self. Am I right? So when I'm dead to self, whatever you say, me, I don't feel it. I, I'm a dead <laughs> I don't feel it. Oh. oh, you're a fool. Oh, am I a fool? I didn't know. I never heard that before. Because when I look in the Bible, the Bible says, I am the son of the living God. I am a chosen one. I am a victorious one. I am more than a conqueror. So what are you talking about? I've never heard that before. You know what? Cut block. Let's move on. That should be your life. Amen. You always embrace things that help your spirit to grow and advance. By the end of this year, I don't want to come back into this place. I'm going to fin uh, walk through the new building. The new building. The new building. When I stop, I'm going to go through the parking lot. If I see any broken exhaust pipe, an engine or you leaking, tow truck, shall they come and pick it up? Because the tomb is already empty. Come tow it. Are you hearing me? I remember, man of God. I'll give it. You see, I love testimonies. I was doing. I was in high school in Montreal. I had to do my high school again because they would not accept the one I brought back. And I met a young man on the school campus. The guy liked me. He will see me, and I will see. He will be standing, he'll be watching me. And I was wondering why is this guy always watching me like this. So I'll continue, I'll go. And you see, at that time, things have changed. The 60% I used to get when I was in high school, this time around, I was in the 90s. I'll bring my results when I come back and I'll show you. <laughs> the Holy Ghost has done something in my life. And the teacher told me, he said, look, have you ever thought to be a journalist on national television? I said, no. But I didn't tell her that I'm a minister of the gospel. He said, the way you speak and the English that you release is different. So I'm going to ask you, do one thing for me. Begin to read all the newspapers. Buy newspapers and read because the perfect English, you'll find it in the news. And I started reading the newspapers and watching the news on TV. That young man, I sat with him in classroom and he was fascinated about me. So one day, I met him. I said, my brother, how are you? Where are you from? He said, well, I'm from Seychelles Island. I said, he said, my brother, I like the way you dress. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, I love the way. And I'll say in my, my head, if this guy knew where I get my clothes, he might be dispirited. But Holy Ghost, help me out. So I said, my brother, are you sure? He said, yeah. I like everything. I've been watching every day. So I went home and I prayed. I said, Holy Ghost, should I take you to salvation? I'm your, I shouldn't. Hey. Because I didn't want to lose that friendship. Through that type of introduction, I wanted the brother to be a good friend of mine. So one day I get the courage. I said, bro, shall he meet me here? In Montreal, we went. And when we were going, I saw his steps began to... Oh, me, I'm going because I'm used to the place, right? And he's like, I look, I said, Charlie, what are you doing? He said, oh, okay. So went in. And whilst he was looking through the clothes, through the racks, <laughs> I said, you haven't seen anything yet. Gradually, I said, I'll leave him. So in some days to come, he started going there without me. Secretly. Ah. So me too, I started seeing me in school. Charlie, the guy is coming. Powerful. Powerful shoe change his shirt with this, you know. I said, Hey, Charlie, this guy, levels have changed. <laughs> levels have changed. Oh, he started smiling. <laughs> I understood the sign of the smile because I knew where it was coming from. That certain things have changed in the spiritual realm. Brother has changed. Why am I saying this? 
Let me tell you something. It's not matter what you put on. It's what is happening in the inside. The power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus rose, he said, I'll send you the comforter. And when that tomb got empty, the Holy Spirit was fulfilled in mankind. And the Spirit of God is God's Spirit himself living in mankind to give you direction and to give you power and to give you the success that you need in life. I'm going to end this message. Please don't neglect the Holy Spirit because Christ said, the day when I'll be lifted up, I'll draw all men nigh unto me. And the Holy Spirit dwells in man today and is in you not to be disregarded or disrespected. It is in you for you to depend on him. Why? Because the tomb is empty. I'll leave this with you. Have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Don't ever get up in the morning without speaking to him. It might sound crazy, but it's okay. Talk to him. Have a relationship with him. And know that he will always be there for you. And I'm here to tell you, you are not going back into the old snake skin. Continue to walk forward. Continue to move on. Don't be afraid. Because God has not given the spirit of fear, but of love and power. And what? A sound mind. Walk in the sound mind of the word of God. The assurances that you get as you read the scripture. And continue to move on. If you are in school, keep on moving. If you don't know what subject to take or what profession, I always say this to people, you don't go to school to get a profession. Never go to school because you are going to look for a profession. You go to school to sharpen your skills. You understand? So if you love plumbing, go to school of plumbing and sharpen the skills of plumbing. You become a master. Go to school. Don't give it up. I always tell people, if, if you don't want to be a, a doctor or a dentist, get a trade job. There are people who are doing weaving. They charge $120 for a set. If you do four, day, four times a week, you're in the 500s or four times a day. I leave you today. Let the Holy Spirit keep you, strengthen you, and you can depend on him. For your success is in the Holy Spirit because the tomb is empty. And never seek the living among the dead because he is risen. And you are not going back to your old filth for you are a new creature and all things have passed away. It's a new ball game, a new day. Let the Holy Spirit speak. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. All fear is Come on, lift it up.
just begin to bless the name of the Lord for the reverend. I want you to celebrate him, celebrate him. Come on, celebrate the man of God. Celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. Celebrate, come on, we church, you can do better than that. Celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and let's pray for the man of God. Stretch your hands. I want you to lift up a prayer. Come on, lift up a prayer for the man of God. Lift up a prayer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it, do it. Lift up a prayer. Lift up a prayer. Lift up a prayer. Come on, let's pray. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Father, we thank Bless you for him. the man of God. Come on. We give you glory, you oh can God, do for better his than life this. in the name of Jesus. Come on, you can do ah, better Father, than thank this. thank you for the wisdom and knowledge wisdom and, and power. In the name come of on, Jesus. Come on. We decree and Bless declare, him. oh God, uh, that Bless whatever him. virtue that he has lost, Bless oh him. God, uh, replenish Bless him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. More Bless and more. him, favor him, oh more God. And more. more grace, more oil, more fresh and more. anointing, oh God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to lift him up, oh God. May his name be mentioned in places he's never even gone before her. Uh, all that steps in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Mighty name. See, man of God, you said something and going, as young I was going to farm, you see the shell of a snake and I didn't know when, when, they, when they take it off, they don't take the same route again. Wow. We used to see these things, but we didn't know we just thought they were tired with their skin and just want to <laughs> just want to just take out. Not doing it is a shift. It's called next level. Oh, come on, somebody. I said it's called next level. That is why when you delete some people, you don't go back to them. Hang around people who can take you to the next level. We don't have time. We are already listen, March is gone. We are in April, fourth month of 2021. Why waste time still crying over spilled milk? Why? Why spend time around losers who will not help push you? Listen, look for those who will challenge your thinking. Let, let me tell you, life, whether you like it or not, they will judge you based on your appearance. It is, listen, we are getting out. Oh, I'm just managing this one small room with my bed and fridge here. Hey! How long are you going to be managing? You need to get to that level that you will say, that will be your testimony. I used to manage. Take your, lift your offerings and Lift your offering. Lift your offering. You used to manage, not now. You cannot be managing for the rest of your life. It's an error. Lift your offering. Lift your offering. Lift your offering. Please, all those who are watching online, please um, make it a point. Get an offering. The wisdom, the anointing, the oil in the house is too much. It's too much. Get an offering. Ushers, help us. Help us. If you are watching online, please connect yourself. Connect yourself. Connect yourself. Reverend Yao is an undercover entrepreneur. <laughs> you know, it's only an entrepreneur who will identify an entrepreneur. Yes, once again, what yes. another powerful message. Yes. This is day so two of our Easter mouth. conference. And wow, a powerful message Lift indeed. He said, why are you Father, looking for the, the dead Jesus, among the living? We honor you why are you looking for the living among the dead? Listen, I us, want you to sow a seed. Sow we a seed believing that no matter what it is that you're holding, looking for, God will do it. Uh, you are seated. He has called you to be seated at the right empty. hand of the Father. And that is a place of integrity. A place where nobody, no accuser can reach you and remind you of your past. You are moving forward and forward always. So I want you to sow a seed believing that yes, you are about to move forward. You are about to be expanded into your next territory. Believe God and have faith. And it is done in Jesus' name. How lovely.
You see, the man of God says something. He said there was a time in his life that he was dealing with unbelief. But one thing tonight I want to share with you. Jesus called Lazarus back to life. Amen. There's an African prophet that said, when somebody said, I will give you a hat, check if that person is wearing one. Let me bring, let me bring it down to your Canadian English. If I promise you, I will give you a car. The first thing you should check, do I drive? If I don't drive and I'm promising you a car, you can doubt me. Because the question is, how come you don't drive but you want to dash me a car? You want to kill me, Abby? You can have your doubt. But listen to what Jesus did. He called for Lazarus, proving to his disciples that I have power over death. Amen. Listen. And he proved to all the Sadducees, the Pharisees, that I have power. If I can resurrect someone, then that means death has no power over me. Amen. I want you to catch this revelation so that we can pray. The same things they are using to frustrate you. The same things they are telling you. You see, your teachers will look at you and say it won't work. Because they haven't witnessed what Jesus did. Sometimes your own parents will even give up. You see, when people are giving up on you, you can label them as Pharisees or Sadducees. Because they don't see, they can't see far. They are seeing ends right here. How many people, listen, somebody will see today, sit down today and see your future. And they will encourage you and push you into that particular thing. But others will look at you today and only see you that you are done today. Jesus did it for the disciples to see. So he's telling them that the man that you are following, I have everything that you need. Whatever you are looking for, I have it. So if I tell you I will bless you, I will bless you. Amen. We are going to pray tonight. And I want to encourage you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray it with all your heart. The Jesus that we follow is the real deal. Yes, yes. He's not a China made. It's not fake one. It's the real product. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you. Anytime you are dealing with the product, the real product, and dealing with the manufacturer himself, they will put you the right way. Amen. No corner, corner. And I've said it here, man of God, I worked at Apple. And one thing, if you take your Apple device to another person and they open it, you have void the warranty. And when you take your product to the manufacturer, they replace it with brand new parts because they manufactured it and they know the right parts for it. I am taking you somewhere so that when you are praying, you will have faith in the God that you are praying to. Because he manufactured you and he knows what to do. If you need a reset, just say, Father, press that reset button and reset me. Amen. Because I am corrupt and I am messed up. I need a reset. Why are we looking for the living among the dead? And today, Christians, we are still looking. We are still looking. We are still looking for the living among the dead. We come to church, we pray, we dance. Immediately we check out. Hmm. The hmm comes in again. Why? The doctor said I have joined this. 
doctor said I have this but you were just the one who was praying let me tell you he has everything we are looking for he has everything you are looking for he told the disciples I am the healing power I have the power to conquer death I did it in the household of Lazarus who told you that I cannot rise I want us to pray and I'm just giving you this few minutes to re-encourage you and to re-boost your faith we all go through that level that season in life that you think everything is gone and do you know why you feel that way because it's the voices that you hear my brother voices are very powerful they can talk you I was telling Pastor Emmanuel I said two people that can kill you faster in life is your prophet and your doctor man of God these two people they can kill you very quick your doctor can tell you I, I, he said the sickness I see in you signs have not even get, gotten a name for it you are dying next two months you will go home and die before the two months come because you are stressed a prophet can just look at you and say hey, you, I, see, hey, you, I see an animal eating your body you will die because they will give you a prophecy that will take your sleep we are going to pray and your prayer tonight is Father I am still holding on to you Amen. we are going to hold on to him Hallelujah. we don't have anywhere to go right. we don't have anybody to cry to That's right. we are holding on to him Hallelujah. we are holding on to him we are holding on to him we are holding on to him lift up your voice and begin to cry on to him Lord we are still holding on to you no matter how the challenge is no matter how the disappointment is we are still holding on to you we don't care what men are saying we don't even care what we are seeing we are still holding on to you we are holding on to you we are holding on to you, Lord. We are holding on to you. 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 We are holding on to you.
see, when you see others making it and you are not making it, you are a human being, you'll be discouraged. I'm telling you, sometimes you see somebody from no way the person is ah, and you say, Did I come to Canada to did I am I here to accompany people to enjoy? I remember in South Africa, I had a teacher from Zimbabwe. We used to sit down and we lament together. He said, ah, did we come to South Africa here to watch others make it or what? I said, my brother, me, this is not my stop It's a transit. <laughs> you see, let me tell you, in life, in life, you would, listen, you know where you are going and don't let anybody change your mind. Amen. <laughs> Jerry International is still in South Africa. He has given, he has me, I said, me, this is a transitional. My brother, let me do what I have to do here. I'll continue. You see people making it and you are asking yourself, what did I do wrong? I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, keep on holding on to Jesus. Don't let anybody give you a microwave miracle. Hey, don't let anybody give you a, 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 a uh, Pacific more products. No, 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 no. Keep on holding on to Jesus. Don't let them give you fake parts. Oh, <laughs> you know, this is your screen. If you take it to Apple, they'll charge you 200 But me, I can fix it for you for $50. I'll tell you it's okay. I'll go to the Apple. The $50, you replace it with that person five times before the phone dies. And you calculate it. That's the same $200 you were going to pay. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Kato shata pata pa. Le brado shata. Lift your hands. Kato ziva da ba kato Father, tonight we said we are grateful. We honor you for this presence. We thank you what you have done tonight we thank you mighty God for your presence Father we honor you we are living not living your presence we are calling upon the Holy Spirit to be our guide to be our everything Holy Spirit we call upon you
deserve the praise. Father, guide each and every one, protect each and every one, preserve each and every one. When we see the rising sun tomorrow, we will say, This is your doing. We thank you, mighty Redeemer, for the empty tomb. We thank you for the life of the man of God, the woman of God. We thank you for in the life of each and every one, Jehovah God. We honor you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Come on, somebody shout a big amen. amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. Amen. We bless God. We bless God. Let's shed. Hold on. Let me give this announcement quick. Tonight on the prayer line, we're not taking communion. We already did it at 6 o'clock. So please, um, if you are coming up tonight on the prayer line, no communion. We're just coming to pray. And uh, that will be tomorrow. We'll be here again. The man of God will be with us tomorrow. Oh, come on. Will you bless? Come on, come on, come on. Tomorrow we'll be here again. We'll be here again. We'll be here again. Tomorrow, please come in your numbers. Tomorrow, come. Tomorrow, the man of God will, will minister to you. If, 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 if the Lord leads the woman of God to also minister, she will also, it will be double, double. Somebody say double, double. Double, double. Oh, somebody say double, double. Double, double. So tomorrow when you are coming, put yourself together. Tomorrow put yourself together. It's going to be fire for fire here. Come early and let the spirit of the Lord work on you. Work on us all. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord.